Hello everyone. In this video, we will investigate the chemistry of a burning candle. There will be four experimental activities in total. For each activity, you need to put down the observation and the interpretation. Please refer to your lab menu, and without further ado, let's get started. Before we start looking at the procedures, let's have a closer look at the burning candle. You can also refer to the diagram in the first page of your lab menu. Different area of a candle flame shows different colors. At the top, we have the yellow zone. Right above the wick, we have the dark zone. Right below the wick, we have the blue zone. After observing the candle, let's move on to some questions. The first question is, where does burning actually take place? Is it on the wax? Is it above the wax? Is it at the wick? Is it on top of the wick or some other places? So we are interested in the exact location where burning takes place. For the second question, which is the hottest part of the flame? Is it at the middle of the flame? Is it at the top of the flame? Is it at the surrounding of the flame? Or if you refer to a different color or different zone of the flame, would it be the blue part or the red part or the yellow part or maybe the dark part? That is the hottest part. So this is our second question. The third question is, are there anything present inside the flame? So the flame appears to be a moving body of yellow and red, but then is there actually thing inside the flame? Are we able to take it out? This is our third question. And the fourth question is, I will add this one down here. What is the thing that is actually burning. So we know the candle burns, but there are solid wax, there are liquid wax, there are wax vapor, or maybe other thing. So what is exactly that is burning in a candle flame? Uh, what is kept burning so that the flame can sustain on top of the wick? This is our fourth question. And to answer these four questions, we will perform all together four demonstrations. And from the result of those demonstrations, perhaps we are able to find the answers about these four questions. So now, let's go ahead and do the demonstration. Activity 1. Transfer a small amount of black charcoal powder onto the liquid wax and observe how the charcoal powder moves. the black charcoal powder moves towards and up the wick. Activity 1. Does the liquid wax move? After adding the charcoal powder on top of the liquid wax, we can observe that the charcoal powder moves. But how does it move? We will say that the black powder moves towards and up the wick. Move towards the wick and go up, climb up along the wick. Now, you notice that we use the word black powder instead of charcoal powder because for observation, we are writing down what we actually see. Now, interpretation. Interpretation means that what we can tell from the observation. So from the observation, 
judging from the fact that the black powder moves towards and up the wick, it tells us that the liquid wax also move towards and up the wick. So let's put down. Now let's move on to the second activity, the second demonstration. Activity 2. Prepare a paper cardboard. Lower the cardboard to the flame for one second and quickly lift it up. Observe the burnt area of the cardboard. It is darker on the outside than the inside. Activity 2. What is the hottest part of the flame? First of all, let's put down the observation. By looking at the burnt area of the card, we can see that there is a darker ring on the outside, but a lighter ring, a lighter area on the inside. So let's put it down. The burnt area is darker on the outside now what does this observation tells you especially regarding the temperature of the flame since it is darker on the outside than the inside as you can tell the paper the cardboard should have experienced a higher temperature on the outside than the inside. So that tells you that the outside of the flame is hotter than the inside. So you can put down the outside of the flame is hotter. Okay? Or you can talk about the interpretation in terms of the yellow zone and the dark zone. Knowing that the yellow zone are on the outside, whereas the dark zone, knowing that the yellow zone is on the outside, whereas the dark zone is on the inside. So another way of saying this is that the yellow zone of the flame is hotter than the dark zone. So two different ways for the interpretation. Now on next page, we are going to draw the burnt area of the cardboard. You can simply draw two circles. You can use straight line to represent the darker area do not shade the diagram in scientific drawing we never shade the diagram but you also have to label so this part is a darker is a darker area whereas the inside should be lighter or paler that should do the work now let's move on to the third activity When the glass tubing is placed in the yellow zone of the flame, black smoke is collected. When the glass tubing is placed in the dark zone of the flame, white smoke is collected.
activity three, what is present in the yellow zone and the dark zone? We try to extract anything inside the flame in the yellow zone, in the dark zone, using a glass tubing. First of all, if you put the glass tubing in the yellow zone, what do we get? We get some black smoke. So you can put down black smoke is obtained. What is the black smoke? Or what makes the smoke black? As mentioned, the black color is due to the formation of carbon soot. So you can put down carbon soot is obtained. As the question is asking, what is present in the dark zone? Now, if you are able to get carbon soot from the yellow zone, does the burning take place in the yellow zone or not? Now, burning will produce several different products, and one of them would be carbon soot. Therefore, if you are able to find carbon soot in the yellow zone, that suggests that burning has taken place in the yellow zone. So another further inter interpretation is that burning take place in yellow zone. So this is a further interpretation. Similarly, let's look at what we can get from the dark zone. From the dark zone, the glass tubing is able to get some white smoke, white smoke or white fume, doesn't matter. Now, what is the white smoke? In fact, the white smoke is the wax vapor. Not only the wax vapor, but the wax vapor that is condensed in the inner wall of the glass tubing. As you can tell, the wax vapor in the flame should be quite hot, and the inner wall of the glass tubing should be much cooler than the flame. So when the wax vapor is extracted by the glass tubing, and when it comes across with the cool inner wall of the glass tubing, they start to condense. So the condensing wax vapor appears to be white smoke. So let's put it down. The interpretation is wax vapor is obtained. Okay. If you are able to find wax vapor in the dark zone, what does it tell you about the burning? Does burning take place in the dark zone? Well, if burning does take place in the dark zone, do we still see the white smoke? Do we still see the wax vapor? Probably not. So that tells us that burning hasn't taken place in the dark zone. So you can put down a further interpretation. No burning takes place in dark zone. No burning takes place in the dark zone. Activity 4. What we are trying to do is to first blow our candle, then we put a burning match next to the wick but not touching it. What we're trying to do is to see whether we can relight the candle without the flame actually touching the wick. Let's see if we are able to do so. The candle relights. Activity 4. 
Can a candle be lighted without touching the wick with the flame? So it's like a magic trick. And from the demonstration, you can tell it works. So let's put down the observation right away. The observation is the candle can be relighted. If you take a closer look at the candle that has just been extinguished, as we put the flame close to the wick, you notice that it is the lingering, lingering wax vapor that is first catch on fire. Then the flame kind of propagate, kind of move back to the wick and relights the candle. So what we can tell us is the thing that is actually burning in a burning candle is not the liquid wax, not the solid wax. It should be the wax vapor. It is the wax vapor that is keep burning so that the candle can sustain its flame. So let's put it down. The interpretation is the wax vapor is burnt by the match. Or you can use the word ignite. Ignite means start a fire. All right, let's go ahead and finish off the conclusion. Can you explain the burning of the candle from all the findings in the above activities? During burning, the solid wax melt to form. So you see the word melt. This one has to be liquid wax, which is absorbed and moves what to the top of the wick. So moves up, moves up to the top of the wick where it is vaporized. So vaporize, then it becomes wax vapor. Okay, and the wax vapor is white in color. The white smoke is found in the dark zone. Remember the third activity. And it is not burnt yet. Not burnt yet. If it's burned, then you should be able to see the black smoke. So why it hasn't burnt yet in the dark zone? Well, burning requires not only the fuel, but also the oxygen. In the dark zone, where the fuel, the wax vapor, is not exposed to enough oxygen, not exposed to enough air. So that's why burning doesn't occur yet. However, with such a high temperature, it expands and meets the oxygen in the air, and therefore they are able to burn and forms carbon soot and other products. The carbon soot is responsible for the black smoke. The carbon soot is responsible for the black smoke. So black smoke is found in the yellow zone. Yellow zone. On burning, it gives out heat and is the hottest part of the flame. So the yellow zone or the outside of the flame is the hottest part as you can see from the burnt area of the cardboard in activity two. So that's it for the candle experiment and that's it for the video.